So we're going to switch gears now into foot care. So in your skills book, this is going to be on page 84. So if you wanted to turn in your book. So here at the top of page 84, you can see the care plan for providing foot care. And the care plan tells us to provide foot care to one foot using soap and water. The resident is sitting in a chair and their sock and shoe should be replaced at the end of the skill. So a couple things I want to talk to you about with this. It tells us to perform foot care to one foot. Of course, in a clinical setting, we're probably going to be doing both feet. But for the test, they only need us to demonstrate this skill on one foot. So you're going to get to pick which foot you want to wash. But in a clinical setting, remember that this will probably be done on both feet. The other thing that I want to talk to you about that makes this a little bit different in a clinical setting versus the test is that for the test, it says that their sock and shoe should be replaced at the end of the skill. In a clinical setting, you're going to put new socks on the patient. Of course, you have clean feet, you're going to get clean socks. That's, you know, we all kind of expect that. But for the test, the person that you're doing this on is another testing candidate. So you're not going to have a pair of clean socks there for that testing candidate. So you're simply going to put their sock back on their foot. Just below the care plan, you can see the supplies and the step-by-step -step instructions. And then if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you'll find the test specific information for this skill. So the timing for this, somebody with your level of experience should be able to complete this skill in 13 minutes or less. That doesn't mean you have to take 13 minutes to do it. It just means that you should be comfortable performing all of the steps of the skill from beginning to end within that 13 minute time frame. This is going to be done on a live testing student. So another person that's getting ready to test or that tested before you is going to be your patient for this. That also means that you might be a patient for this skill for somebody else. This patient will be sitting in a chair at the beginning of the skill and charting is not required. One other thing while we're on the subject, don't forget that on each one of these skills pages, you have a little gray box here at the end that has review questions related to the skill. Don't forget to do those questions because that will actually help reinforce the important points of the skill as you're learning. So for um, foot care, it's just like hand care, right? With hand care, we soaked the hand, we took it out to wash, we put it back in the basin to rinse, we took it out to dry, we filed the rough edges, we used an orange stick to clean out under the nails, and then we lotion. Well, foot care is like hand care, except that we don't do anything with the nails. So just like with hand care, we're going to put the foot in the basin to soak and take it out to wash, put it back into rinse and take it out to dry. And we're not going to file the rough edges. We are not going to trim toenails. We're not going to clean under toenails. Not our job. All we're going to do is wash the foot, rinse the foot, dry the foot, and lotion the foot. So this is actually a pretty easy skill, you know, and you're only going to do one foot because that's all the care plan is going to tell us to do. So this isn't a, a, a difficult skill as long as you remember those washing rules. And if you remember the washing rules, when we got water, we checked it and then we asked them to check it. Whatever we wash, we rinse. Whatever we rinse, we dry. Don't get the surface wet. So we'll put a barrier on, on the floor to put all of our supplies on so that if water spills, it's not going to go onto the floor. And if we're going to apply lotion, we'll warm it up and wipe off the excess. So all of those washing rules apply. And if you can remember those washing rules, this skill is super easy. The hardest part of it, honestly, is getting on the floor and doing foot care and then trying to get back up off the floor afterwards. That's the hardest part. Now, if you want to get an extra chucks to put down so you can kneel on it, that's fine. If you want to kneel on the chuck that's, that's already there, that's fine. If you just want to kneel on the floor, there's no problem with that because if you remember, last week we learned our uniform is not clean once we start working. So kneeling on the floor is perfectly okay. You're not violating any infection control rules with that because your uniform isn't clean to begin with. So 
if you want to take the extra step and put another chucks on the floor, there's no problem with that. You can do it. Um, but just, you know, don't, don't get overly, you know, involved in, well, your uniform touched the floor. It's okay. It's, it's perfectly okay. All right. But in order to understand this skill, even though it's a super easy skill, you're going to put the foot in the basin, take it out to wash it, put it back into rinse, take it out to dry, put lotion on after warming the lotion up and then wipe off the excess and then put all your stuff away. Super easy skill. But we need to understand that that's not why we're doing this skill. We're not doing the skill to wash the foot. That the Washing the foot is our reason for being there, but that's not why we're doing this skill. Hands are pretty visible. They're out here in the open for everybody to see. So if the patient has a wound or a rash or something like that, you're going to pick it up pretty easily because our hands are uncovered and easily visible. But our feet are not. Our feet are usually in socks and shoes. They're not very visible. And if you're not doing foot care on a regular basis, the patient may have a wound that doesn't get acknowledged. So that's the reason that we're doing foot care is to look for any abnormalities. Now, the other reason that we're doing foot care, remember I said we don't clean under the nails and we don't file any rough edges and we don't trim toenails, not our job. Well, it's got to be somebody's job, right? Those patients don't just quit growing toenails because they're in a clinical setting. So the person who's responsible for that in a clinical setting is a podiatrist. That's a foot doctor. Podiatrists will go to different healthcare settings and take care of patients that have foot issues that need to be seen. And the podiatrist can trim the toenails or grind them down. They can clean underneath them. They can treat any foot problems. So podiatrists are very, very helpful in a clinical setting. But the problem is that they only come around usually once a month. And they don't go room to room looking for patients. They're not going to go into room one and see if somebody needs their service or into room two and then into room three. It doesn't work like that. The way it works is that in a clinical setting, you are assigned to do foot care. You do foot care and notice that the patient's got some super long toenails that need to be addressed. You let the nurse know. The nurse puts the patient on a list. The podiatrist comes in once a month, looks at the list, and sees the people that are on the list only. So if you aren't doing foot care, if you're not letting the nurse know that there's an issue, the patient never gets on the list and they never get seen. Just because a podiatrist comes to the facility doesn't mean anything. They have to see that patient, and the only way to see the patient is for them to be on a list to be seen. So your role in this is super critical. If you aren't doing foot care or you do foot care but don't pass anything on to the nurse, that patient is never going to get their foot problems taken care of by the podiatrist when they come visit. So that's the main reason that you're there. You are washing the foot just to have a chance to look at it. It's an excuse to be there. You're washing the foot because it allows you to pick the foot up and look at the bottom of the foot for any abnormalities that may be there, um, any skin infections, any rashes or wounds or sores or red areas or blisters or anything that needs to be addressed. It's your excuse to be there. Um, but washing the foot is not really what it's all about. So during the skill, you actually have to say something out loud to the evaluator, something like, I'm looking at all surfaces of the skin, or I'm inspecting the foot for any abnormalities, or I don't see any skin issues on the foot. However you want to term it is fine. You just need to let that patient know that you're looking at their foot because the evaluator is listening for that. Do you understand the need for shoes when a patient walks? If you understand those things, now I can show you foot care and it'll make a little bit more sense to you. But foot care is actually one of the easier skills. Remember, it's washing rules. So whatever we wash, we rinse. Whatever we rinse, we dry. Don't get the surface wet, so we'll use a barrier. If we're going to apply lotion, we'll warm it up first, wipe off the excess, no lotion between the toes. Anytime we get water, 
we're gonna check it, we're gonna let the patient check it, and we clean our basin the same way we always clean. So there's not a whole lot of new stuff here to learn. The, the procedure is very, very similar to hand and nail care, so it's not a hard skill by any means. Anybody have any questions before I show you this skill? No. Yes, I have a question. Yes. Um, for patients that can like walk or they can like shower, is it still done to them or is that for all the patients that the foot care is needed? You will go by your care plan for each individual patient. So some patients that shower on their own, no, I'm not going to have my CNA do foot care on that patient. But another patient who showers on their own, but I know they have diabetes and they don't have very good sensation of the bottom of their feet, I may ask the CNAs to do foot care on that patient because of the limited visibility of the patient. So every situation is going to be a little bit different. I can't give you one answer that will cover everything. And that's why nurses' assessments are so important. Nurses have to assess the patient individually. So gloves are not required for this, but they are recommended because you don't know if the patient has a wound or a sore or a cut or a scrape or a scratch. The whole purpose of you doing this is to look for those things. So if there is an unknown, if we're not sure if the skin is intact, we need to wear gloves because there is an unknown element. Now most people want to wear gloves for this anyway because we just don't like touching somebody else's feet. Ooh, yeah. People have a foot thing. So, um, you know, touching somebody else's feet without gloves is a little high on the ick meter. So you're going to wear gloves for that too. But I need you to understand that the real reason that you're wearing gloves here is because it is an unknown. Now, for the test, you may see somebody do this skill without gloves and it's not going to fail them. I don't want you to feel like this is not an automatic fail because the glove rules say that we're going to touch, use gloves and we're going to touch something ooey gooey. If the skin is intact, then gloves are not required. So for this skill, we're going to put a barrier on the floor. We're going to get water. Remember, anytime we get water, we check it. The patient checks it. And then we're going to put the foot down, or put the foot in the basin of water and uh, let it soak. Now, in a clinical setting, you're going to let it soak for five to 10 minutes. So that means that you'll remove your gloves, you'll go uh, wash your hands, take care of another patient, and come back. For the test, we only have one patient. That's it. Well, there's nowhere for us to go. We're not going to sit there for five minutes and watch a foot soak water. We're not going to do that. So for the test, you're simply going to put the foot in the basin, let it get wet, and then we're going to take it out of the basin and put it on a towel. We'll wet a washcloth, put some soap on that washcloth, and we're going to wash all surfaces. And this is when we're going to inspect. So we're going to look at the top of the foot, the bottom of the foot, between the toes, the heel, the toenails. We're looking for any abnormalities. Once we've washed the foot, we'll put it back in the basin to rinse. We'll take it out and put it on the towel to dry. And when you dry, you want to dry all surfaces thoroughly, and you're going to take an edge of the towel and go in between each toe to blot. Now, when you blot, do not use a seesaw method. Don't put the towel in between the toes and go up and down, you know, so don't seesaw it up and down. That skin is very, very fragile. So we just want to put the towel in to blot, move it out. Go to the next toe, in to blot, move it out. Go to the next one, in to blot, move it out. So be very careful with that. Don't use the seesaw motion. Then we'll... Um, once we've dried the foot, we're going to warm the lotion up in our hands. We'll apply to all surfaces, but not between the toes, and we're going to wipe off that excess. After we've done that, we're going to go take care of our supplies. So dirty linens will go in the dirty linen container. Your basin will be cleaned according to the basin cleaning standards that we've learned already. So we're going to dump it in the sink, rinse it, dry it, store it. Um, and make sure your environment's clean. And then we'll just do the closing. This is not a long skill. This is not a hard skill, but you do have to get on the floor for it.